But can necromorphs actually uh, survive outside the presence of a marker? Like, what if the marker's so far away? And that guy did not even flinch from the fucking <sighs> mine. Right. Stand by. What am I standing by for? Okay, that was weird. Uh, it, shit! It's mutating everything. Alright, this is gonna be a massive defense sequence. Just like in the original Dead Space. So this is gonna be very problematic. That lurker's still alive somehow. Why can't I- oh my god, the fucking lurker. I don't have enough pulse rifle ammunition. I'm guessing these are enhanced lurkers, that's probably why they're not dying instantly. Yeah, these are, uh, uh, although this one could be damaged though, that's why it looks enhanced. Come on. Jesus Christ, every single time with these fucking lurkers! At least you can use the uh, enemies to block the lurker's shots, but it doesn't do a lot of damage, sadly. What a terrible sequence. That was... You have to really stack up on a lot of high-grade ammunition if you're going to stand a chance. Yeah, flamethrower is needed, the mines are needed for sure, although for some reason it doesn't kill the lurkers. My walkthrough is going to demand a lot for me, if I'm going to understand this game. Oh great, fucking guardian. And there's a second guardian right there, I remember that. Make 
See, like, I didn't take damage just then. But when you slow enemies down, they damage you. That doesn't make sense. I'm not even sure if there were enemies in that entire sequence. But if there weren't, that's good. I've already gone through enough shit as it is. Ah, great. Oh shit, there's a brute. And I can't move. I'm gonna die. Oh shit, god damn it. <laughs> oh dear. Premature understanding of the spawns, guys. You'd never get this kind of crap in Resident Evil 4, ever. Whoa! Can the... Can the Brute actually come in here? He can't. Oh, nice! That exploder really came in handy. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, I'll have to do a variation of that strategy for the walkthrough. How the hell are you still alive? Whew, this is quite a lengthy walk I'm having to do. Ah, oh, it's an incomplete guardian. Can't let them hit me, because they will damage me. Oh, shit, there's a divider. I only just recognized the sound effect. I can use that vent at the other end of the room to deal with him. And then burn the rest with the flamethrower. I don't know, I just- there, there's something quite charming about the way the, uh, dismemberment works in this game. I mean, I know it does suck that, um, it's only specific impalement devices that actually dismember limbs. But the, the damage that these, uh, impalement devices do is pretty good. Of course. Of course there has to be a tentacle. There's a vent here. Oh shit. Why are they even trying to attack me? I'm trying to get your marker back to your planet, geniuses. Surely the marker is relaying this information to you. What the hell was that? Why'd the screen shake for no reason?
What? It survived the impalement. Wow, this is like the... It's like these last two chapters. We're just dealing with the, uh... The black lurkers. Look at that. There's no reason it should survive that, whether even if it's enhanced. That's so dumb. That was a bad move. Oh shit! What are you grabbing that? text log for well, that was a fucking mess I don't have any flame to refuel. Shit! Oh shit! See, like, it just locks onto you the entire time. How the hell do you avoid that? Unless you run away at the, like, and just hope he doesn't hit you. Why are my mines not detonating? Yep, this is still of lacking quality. Nothing has really changed about my thoughts in the later chapters of this remake. They're still pretty bad. Oh, she oh okay, so that's the significance of the needle in Dead Space 2. So that's how um, Nicole killed herself, I think. So I thought that needle in um, Dead Space 2 was just for uh, a murder weapon purpose, but it's actually significant with Nicole. What? Oh. And why hasn't the marker affected you? I mean, it clearly has if you're seeing your, um, your brother. Alright, oh, that's the hive mind. I know that sound anywhere. So at least kept that, uh, sound effect genuine with the hive mind. And they're really stocking me up on supplies. Here it comes! And it's gonna kill, uh, Kendra. Wow. Oh, look at all the supplies everywhere. This is gonna be a damage sponge. It's gonna be a really shit fight. I mean, the original hide mine wasn't so bad. It was pretty simple. But I think they'll make it worse. Most likely they'll make it worse. Fuck you! And fuck your marker! It's so hard to hit this thing's weak spot. Does stasis work on it? No, it doesn't work.
Whoa! Wow, how, how did they do that? Is it spawning enemies? Oh shit! At least the sound effect is really good. Crawling it attacks. I still don't understand the point of this, but what does it do? It probably just gets in your way, and if you're too close when they explode, it'll do damage. The sound effects on its attacks are really good. You can tell it's attacking when it's just doing that vroom sound. And now comes the uh, the, the uh, cinematic phase. It's gonna grab me or something. This is not gonna be good. Oh wait, it's enemies. And good thing the hive mind isn't attacking you while you're doing this. It might do so in the later phases. Why are there so many stasis packs everywhere? So I don't remember fighting enemies in the, uh... Hive Mind boss fight back in the first game. It's trying to cut me off. Okay, if I didn't shoot, then it probably would have instantly killed me. Whoa! Whoa! Oh sh- Wow, that, that acid lasts for a very long time. Oh god! This is a really fun fight. I'm enjoying this. So I think it, it's it's programmed to do it in the middle of the arena. Whoa. So you gotta get good on your angles. You gotta get good at angling yourself so that you can uh, bait out the tentacles properly. Yeah, this fight is really good. I'm really loving this. It feels well designed. He's doing it in the middle again. Okay, that wasn't the middle that time. Oh, he's cutting out both sides now. That was close. Shit! That was very close. Weak spots are exposing.
I hope I don't run out of ammunition. That would suck. Oh damn, I'm running low on plasma cutter ammo. I'm gonna do like a U a U movement. I'm gonna move like it's a U. Like this. See how I'm running like I'm in a U? It's definitely helping out right here. This is so good. Oh no. Let's hope the cinematic phase isn't so bad. Okay, I can actually see the fucking laser. Thank God. I'm gonna die. I'm, I'm so fucking dead. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! Shit! Oh my god, that was so close! Please be dead, please be dead! I, I haven't gotten the trophy yet, so I don't think it's dead. He might be incapacitated for the moment. That's- Oh, I got, I got it! I got it! Oh my god, yes! <laughs> that was fantastic, that was a great fight. That was amazing. And I like the uh, inclusion of the acid, and how it forces you to move strategically. And I did like the choice of enemies, and how it used um, the flamethrower and the pulse rifle. I mean, I didn't use the pulse rifle as much, but I'm so glad there weren't any stupid lurkers or leapers. It was just necromorphs, and um... And the, the, the exploder. But that, that was so much fun. That, that right there redeemed the shitty fights against the Leviathan. I mean, the Leviathan Remnant was okay. But yeah, that was a crappy first boss fight. A really bad one. And then the second boss with the Levi Leviathan Remnant was okay. And this one was just amazing. This was really good. And that cinematic phase, it's still very clunky. And I don't know when the Hive Mind kills you. But at least you can see where you're fucking pointing compared to Dead Space 1. How did he get off the planet so fast? That's it. Exodus, that was the trophy name. Completing chapter 12 on any difficulty. Set a benchmark. Hmm. Oh, that's just completing the game on medium difficulty or above. And I know exactly what happens in this ending. I wonder if they preserved it. <sighs> it's such a shame that the later chapters of this remake weren't good. But this final boss fight was so much fun. It did require a lot of plasma cutter ammo, though. I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry. And Isaac, I still hate your face. I'm not seeing the grizzled veteran like before. Yeah, so um, he's still hallucinating because the marker codes are still in his head. Wow, go up to 16 speed. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that was a... I, I don't know how I feel about this game. I feel like this game is about... Uh, I'd say a 6 out of 10. I mean, like, the initial chapters before Hydroponics were a lot of fun. And I did enjoy um, having to uh, use, like, multiple different weapons aside from just the Plasma Cutter. 
but I just feel like the game used poor designs to justify that most of the time, rather than relying upon very smart designs and like intelligent enemy placements and intelligently designed mechanics. Like Resident Evil 4 knows how to um, make you use all of your weaponry. The, the Kalisto Protocol managed to do that as well. Um, Dead Space 3 was really the first Dead Space game where they tried to make you use more, multiple different weaponry, but it was done very poorly. I, I mean, I, I like the uh, idea of using multiple different weapons, and like they want you to use multiple different weapons because of the fact that they, are in, they actually um, give you the weapons in a more organic fashion, where you actually find them from dead bodies and the like. And that was the case with the uh, the plasma cutter, the pulse rifle, the ripper, and the flamethrower. Although the ripper was completely useless, I'm not too sure what the whole point of that god awful weapon is. But um, yeah. So like on that uh, aspect, I did like that with this game, and I'm glad it wasn't just like a very boring plasma cutter only uh, game. This and that. But um, yeah, like the, the poor designs really rear their ugly head in this game. Like the changes to the flinch animations, the flinch animations are so bad in this game because of the new peeling system. And I don't think that the developers anticipated the uh, repercussions involved with designing the peeling system as such. And so um, you were having to uh, rely upon like really silly strategies, I would say. I mean, I, I don't really recall a lot of the silly strategies I used, but like the flinch animations were so stupid that the grab animations are so broken in this game. They're really bad. And like uh, the, the boss fights, like the, the first Leviathan fight was terrible, although based on my recent experience, at least with the upgrades I had with the plasma cutter, um, I've definitely found out how to beat the, the Leviathan easily. And then the Leviathan Remnant was an okay fight. It's just a matter of knowing uh, when to weaken the core so that you're able to get him defeated easily without encountering so many of his douchey moves. And then this Hivemind fight was a lot of fun. So I think, I, um, I think I'm okay with the boss design. I mean, obviously the, the damage racy part to the final phase of the first Leviathan was really stupid. Because, like, trying to juggle between uh, oxygen would, would have been really stupid. But thank god you don't have to do that with the upgrades I have. But, um, I, I don't have a problem with the game uh, making you use the upgrades, because that's kind of always been a thing with Dead Space, where the upgrades are kind of crucial to the natural flow of gameplay. However, that's still no, no excuse for the way they designed the flinch animations on this game. The flinch animations are terrible, the melee is so unreliable, and, like, the, the stomp... The stomp just became very useless after a while. And it was only there just to get ammunition. The pulse rifle mines were nice. The the flamethrower was pretty cool as a tool. But like, not focusing on that. The the environments, like the environmental fatigue, really started to set in after hydroponics. And it's the same problem I had with Dead Space One. The the environments just got so uh, repetitive and same looking after like so long. And it really set in very quickly with this game. And, like, the, the, the times when they were trying to uh, introduce combat scenarios, it wasn't enough to stave away a lot of the uh, the, the problems I had with the environment and then how, without boring the combat really got. I mean, I do like that they tried to improve upon the Kinesis system to make uh, going for the Necromorph uh, pincers reliable. As far as I can tell, going for uh, two pincer arms and using it against a single ne Necromorph is enough to kill it. And then I like the inclusion of the vents. I love how you can use the fans from the vents to actually dismember enemies. Because this was not a thing in the previous Dead Space games. So like that, that right there is a really cool inclusion. But I still feel like um, there is a sense of uh, rigidity to the game's designs and not as much flexibility. And when I say flexibility, I'm not talking about, oh, just being able to do plasma cutter only, because that's just silly. I, I would never relate it to that. But, like, you had to approach sequences in one specific way, because otherwise the gameplay would fall apart. Like, um, what, what I was saying before about the premature uh, knowledge of the enemy placements. Like, you have to prematurely understand the enemy placements if you want to stand a chance against the uh, badly designed uh, combat encounters. 
And that's just the problem I have with the way they've designed like the Venn system and with the way the enemies just spawn just out of nowhere, just randomly. That's just always been a thing with Dead Space, and I feel like it hinders the gameplay experience. And I, I do understand why they wanted to do it, but I don't think it's very good the way they did it. Like, if you go to Resident Evil 4, you don't have any moments where enemies just spawn back in previous areas, or they just spawn out of nowhere when you're in the middle of areas. Like, th there was an actual um, flow to the gameplay that I feel was better designed in Resident Evil 4, albeit the pacing and the flow of Resident Evil 4's gameplay can be hindered at times. But I just feel like it's hindered a lot more with Dead Space, and it's the case with every single Dead Space game. And, like, th that's just the problem I have right here. It's just, um, that very flawed um, flow to the gameplay, coupled with the gameplay problems, leads to a very stagnant, repetitive experience, albeit the gameplay in this remake was at least a little bit better than the, the actual uh, original version of Dead Space, but there are times where the original version of Dead Space mechanically is better than this game. And like, looking at the enemy types, the standard Necromorph um, they could be pretty bullshit. The Enhanced Necromorphs, uh, they can be pretty bullshit as well. But, like, you just had to use your Kinesis properly when using the, uh, the pincers on the, uh, Necromorphs. But, like, the, the actual physics involved with the Kinesis when you're launching high-velocity objects, it doesn't elicit the right stun on the enemies. And so, um, like, when you're trying to grab boxes or crates or anything that's larger or, like, about the same size as the, uh, Necromorph, it doesn't stun them for some reason. Which I don't understand. And then looking at the enemy types, again, I mean, I've already talked about the Necromorphs and the uh, Enhanced Necromorphs, but the Leapers... Leapers were, um... Th they weren't as bullshit as they were in uh, Dead Space 2, but the lack of flinch animations was definitely problematic. And also, uh, at least the Flamethrower was really useful against them. But, um, yeah, they took quite a beating, and then, like, the, the Lurkers, at least the Lurkers in, like, the first ten chapters were, were pretty good, because they died instantly from the, uh, the pincers when you threw them at them. And also, the Pulse Rifle's mines were very effective, but then later on, uh, it started to become less effective because we were dealing with enhanced Lurkers. But I'll definitely say that the Lurkers on this game are the best the Lurkers have ever been. You're not dealing with very clunky, fiddly animations where the, uh, the AI system governing the transition from actually uh, engaging their tentacles to having them receive their tentacles was very, very flawed in the Dead Space games. You're not dealing with that in this game so much because you can instantly kill the Lurkers very quickly. And then, like, the, the Exploders were, were okay. They weren't... They were pretty much like the standard uh, Exploders from Dead Space 1. Nothing special about them there. Pregnants weren't so bad. And I, do, I did like uh, using the needles, uh, the pincers against the, uh, the, uh, the Pregnants when you dismember their limbs. The, the Dividers, um, as long as you have a vent with you, like the, the actual fan from a vent, you should be able to dispatch them easily, and then the Flamethrower can be handy. But um, then we have the Twitchers. The Twitchers are the worst enemy in the game. They are the most broken enemy type. When you're dealing with multiple of them, the, the gameplay really falls apart because the flinch animations are broken with them. They have way too much life. And even when you shoot, shoot the stasis modules to just slow them down, it's still not enough because they just immediately recover from the animation. Like, I have to figure stuff out with that enemy, but, like, so far as I can tell, the Flamethrower is your best option for dealing with Twitchers, and then you have to shoot them with the Plasma Cutter while they're stunned to actually, uh, dismember their limbs. And I think that was their original intent, because they gave you the Flamethrower very early on. And, like, the, the Pulse Rifle and the Flamethrower are pretty good without the upgrades, that's why I devote everything to the Plasma Cutter. So it's good in that department. But, um, it still doesn't justify the way they designed the, uh, the Twitchers. The Twitchers are just rigidly designed, where you have to, uh, deal with them in one specific way. And, like, I can forgive such enemy designs in Resident Evil 4, like with the Navistadors, where the shotgun is the one thing that can actually stun the Navistadors consistently, at least with the invisible Navistadors, and then with the flying Navistadors. If you shot them out of the air, they would die instantly, which was really well designed. But in a game like Dead Space, where the enemy balancing is so against you at every step of the way, like, you know, they should have designed the Twitchers a little bit better. Like, they could have made the melee very reliable against the Twitchers, but they didn't do so whatsoever. And, like, the, the flinch animation systems are, are, like, just about as broken as Dead Space 3's flinch animations. And, uh, any other enemy types worth mentioning? Because I think that was all of the enemy types we dealt with.
But yeah, just the enemy placements, a lot of the enemy placements on this game felt very improper and lacking in terms of intelligence. And you remember like the, the very first chapter of this game where we were uh, trying to get those claws uh, attached to remove the damaged uh, tram? Why did they put so many necromorphs in that room? Like there were a lot of questionable enemy placements like that in this game. And, you know, like, a lot of people like to lambast Dead Space 3 for such enemy placements, but Dead Space 1, 2, and 3 have plenty of problems regarding that. And, like, Resident Evil 4, there were a couple of sequences where uh, the enemy placements could be very questionable, but it was hard to lambast the game for that because at least you had the mechanics to balance those kind of uh, enemy arrangements out, and they, you didn't have enemies spawning out of nowhere. The enemies that you were dealing with initially when you first enter the room those were the enemies you were dealing with and then any subsequent enemies afterwards would spawn in from designated spawn points like they would jump from the ceiling or something like that would make a, a bit of sense with the way they designed that but like dead space i just i don't agree with that whatsoever but on the story side I do like what they did with the story on this game, how they integrated certain elements from uh, Dead Space 2 and 3 story, and they put it into this game. That just goes to show, like, a level of care, and, like, they, they wanted to link this remake to the previous Dead Space games to show that the story in those games is crucial to when they remade this game. And this is something that Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake could never accomplish. Like, they never bothered taking story elements from uh, Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 and actually integrating those story elements into uh, the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3. And I think it's because of copyright issues. I, I think I've mentioned this before, but I think Capcom has to work with, like, copywriting within their own brand, which doesn't make any sense. Which is why you don't see a lot of stuff from, like, um, the animated shows or movies that they make actually appearing in the games. Or, like, they reference a lot of material from the games. Like, um... You know, like, for instance, in Resident Evil 2 Remake, there's never any mention of Derek C. Simmons from Resident Evil 6, because he was one of the most important people ever, because he was the one, alongside other people, who initiated the nuclear strike against Raccoon City. But they never bothered acknowledging that. But if the developers of Dead Space Remake handled the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3, I guarantee you, they would have included such characters and lore points from those games. So to see that level of care with the storytelling, that is amazing. And like the inclusion of unitology, the inclusion of uh, convergence and like the creation. I mean, they, they didn't mention the Brethren Moons, though. But like, uh, I, you know, th there are a lot of story moments I felt really cool. Like um, the way uh, Isaac met Nicole through his mother because she was a unitologist. That added detail where Nicole is essentially uh, someone who uh, is trying to get people out of Unitology because Unitology is a cult. And, like, there are a lot of people trying to get people out of cults, but, like, that being how Isaac met Nicole is such a connection that I really like. I really enjoy that. So, like, I think the story on this game... Like, on that department is great, but, like, in the moment, a lot of the story points really felt unnecessary. Like, what happened with Hammond and Chen, and then the way uh, they set up Kendra to then betray you, and she was actually a member of EarthGov. And, like, she's still trying to uh, keep the marker intact. That, that, just, that, I feel, is just very weird, the way they did it. And it was equally as weird in, um, in Dead Space 1. And then, like, the times when Isaac is not really questioning what Nicole is doing, like, the way she's saying certain things. It's almost like he's in a lucid state, like he's dreaming, but he's not. But it's almost like the marker is inducing this. It's... I, I don't know how best to explain it. It's very strange. Like, there are a lot of story moments like that that were very strange in this remake. And, uh... Yeah. So, like, the, the, the score I'm gonna give this game right now... I'm gonna give it a, uh, a 6 out of 10. Maybe a 5.5 out of 10. Because, like, it's it's definitely better than Dead Space 1. But that still doesn't excuse a lot of the poor designs present with this game. But at least when I go through this game to do my walkthrough, uh, the, the blow will be lessened. So, um, I can at least appreciate a second playthrough on that department, but then, like, the, with impossible difficulty, where it's only one save, and if you die, you go back to the very beginning, and then you have to rewatch all those unskippable cutscenes. Why did they have the unskippable cutscenes? What were they trying to do with that? 
There is no reason to have these unskippable cutscenes. It's p people are going to view the cutscenes as just loading screens now. How are they going to appreciate the story when they're going to be dying on impossible difficulty and then having to rewatch those cutscenes that just take ages to get done? But then again, like compared to the Callisto Protocol, this game didn't have so much downtime with the cutscenes. Callisto Protocol had way too many moments, like where you were crawling through vents. I can't remember a single moment where I'm crawling through vents in this uh, game. And like the cutscenes were um were less frequent, but there were also a couple moments where the game wanted you to stand by and wait for things, and it's pretty annoying. But like th this game is longer than the uh, Callisto Protocol, I would say. And like uh, the the Callisto Protocol mechanically, I would say uh, it's a lot more trustworthy compared to Dead Space Remake at the cost of uh, mechanical creativity, because the Callisto Protocol isn't as creative with its mechanics compared to Dead Space. But like I could trust the the flinch animation systems a lot more with the Callisto Protocol. I can trust the grip. I can trust the uh, the melee a lot more. I don't understand the excuses involved with how they shoddily designed the mechanics for the, the remake. That's what really bugs me right now. But I'll have a lot more to say when I do my walkthrough of the Dead Space remake. But yeah, like I said before, this is either a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10, and the score might drop when I actually look over it again. Because that's how it normally is when I do these walkthroughs, but that remains to be seen. But overall, guys, I would definitely recommend uh, giving this remake a, uh, a chance if you want to try it. And yeah, this effectively concludes my blind playthrough of the Dead Space remake on hard difficulty. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.